Hey folks, this is Dan from Discern. Hope you're having a good week. I was recently introduced to uh, an album by Sarah Brusco called The Woven Whisper. It's an album that came out back in August of 2014. But having just recently heard it, here are my thoughts now. Sarah Brusco is a woman with a very tragic yet inspiring backstory. She's a singer-songwriter making worship music with sort of an ambient, dreamy, devotional feel. About seven or eight years ago, Sarah, pregnant with her son, developed a tumor that engulfed her ovary, resulting in the hardening of her vocal cords and the loss of her singing voice. The doctors told her she would never sing again, but in a few years, God actually graciously healed her vocal cords and she was again back to singing and leading corporate worship. Out of this trial comes the debut album from Sarah, The Woven Whisper, funded by a successful campaign on Kickstarter. Now, I expected this album, before I listened to it, to directly speak to her vocal cord tragedy, but I don't know how any of this album directly speaks to those issues. She doesn't explicitly address it at any point, and the lyrics were never really specific enough to her story, and they didn't really draw me into that story. I'm not sure if she stayed away from specifics because this album is meant to be a worship album, and if she got too specific, it wouldn't fit to be congregational. But, I mean, I got into this album because the story behind it was so compelling, so not addressing the story was a significant letdown. But still, let's get into it. The album opens with uh, the song A Breath, featuring lush, organic-sounding strings, spacious vocals. It's like more of an intro than a standalone song. The vocals are mostly just humming, singing notes, the occasional few words. The song is very much like a breath, short and wispy and really beautiful. Tracks 3, 4, and 5, Carry Me, At the Table, and The Wood Between the Worlds were not what I initially expected. On my first listen through, I didn't really like them because they weren't really saying anything of value or anything I could grab onto. It's sort of that let the spirit lead you style of singing. You hear this devotional style permeate much of the album, and as you might expect from a devotional album, excitement and flair sort of in your face isn't the goal. So I guess I was expecting that which this album never intended to deliver. And I had to come to understand that the sometimes aimless instrumentals punctuated by a word here or there is part of the journey. Don't expect to get anywhere fast in this record. In fact, this record was overall, I thought, too long. Over half the tracks cracked the six-minute mark. And when your album already has ten tracks, twelve with the two bonus tracks, it had me thinking, how much longer is this? The fifth track, uh, The Wood Between the Worlds, it's a title taken from a line in The Magician's Nephew, the sixth book published in the Chronicles of Narnia series. The quote refers to this place, this wood between the worlds. It's sort of an in-between place, a place of dreaming. The song features a hang drum. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. A violin, some acoustic guitar, heavy dose of reverb drenched vocal loops. It gives the track sort of a world music style, rhythmically and melodically. The next track, Your Faithful Voice, was one of my favorites. I loved the sound of the electric guitar riff, laid back tone, energetic feel. The lyrics on this song and in other moments throughout the record speak about the communication of God through creation, through the cross, through history, through trials. Communication comes up again in At the Table. Uh, lyrics like, your spirit rolls off my tongue and you meet me face to face, heart to heart, breath to breath. Very spirit-led, charismatic, mystical even. And I just have to mention something because you have to tread carefully when you talk about God's communication, where he speaks, and most importantly, what he speaks. I agree that God communicates his attributes to us in a number of different ways, but I hope you would agree with me that they must fall in line with his written word. The Bible keeps us in check for what we may feel as communication and grounds us throughout that. Track number seven, the song At Peace, a track featuring the rapper Just Steve. Why is there suddenly a rapper thrown into this album? I mean, poor choice, if you ask me. I didn't understand this one bit. And it wasn't really even a good track, even taken out of its awkward context. I couldn't even understand what it was. The instrumental on the verses is completely out of context of the rest of the album, and the spacious vocal chorus doesn't make sense after the punchy rap verse. None of this album has the bravado that surrounds rap music. I mean, how could you expect this mashup to fit smoothly in a devotional worship album? Anyway, moving on. The next track, 
Make Your Home Inside My Heart was another one of my favorites. The strings on this song are played beautifully. I guess they were performed by Imogen Heap's cellist Sharon Gerber. They're very delicately played. They fit on this track especially well. You know, I actually think this track excels because it doesn't try to be more than it needs to be. The instrumentation is simple. The arrangement is straightforward. Each element of the song feels purposeful. Before we get into the title track, The Woven Whisper, let me just say one thing. Reverb can be used poorly or it can be used elegantly. The acoustic guitar near the beginning of the track or on the vocal as it first comes in, poorly. The electric guitar swells or synth pad on this track, elegantly. There's a fine line with reverb and when you push over the limit, things get cheesy and silly very quickly. I noticed this at numerous spots in the record. Reverb got slung all over the place, and at times it ended up being a detriment in some cases. On this title track, I could totally relate to the lyric, the woven whispers of your grace. I understand that feeling, you know, seeing reflections of the gospel in your life. God can even use the mundane to point you to heavenly realities of his goodness and grace and cause us to respond in worship. I thought this was a pretty good track overall. Exalt the Lord, the 10th track, is a cover of a worship song from the early 90s by Cindy Rethmeyer. In my opinion, Exalt the Lord is far too long. For the minimal amount of substantive content in this song, whether lyrically or musically, it could have been half the length it was. It became somewhat of a repeat machine, just pumping out the same lines and phrases again and again, but at a really slow tempo. Night Song and Leading Me On, an acoustic version, are two bonus songs not available on iTunes. You can hear them, though, on Relevant Magazine's The Drop. Night Song is actually a pretty good, ambient, dreamy song. Nothing too goofy or distracting, well, except for the sound of a guitar pedal being clicked off and on. Leading Me On, the acoustic version, has a unique lo-fi tape recording sound at the beginning, almost like a field recording. It sounded fine until some child on the recording made a noise way too loud that actually startled me. And, you know, come on, in a devotional album, it pulled me right out of it. The acoustic version is decent. Uh, the vocals are kind of harsh. They sound like they're clipping quite a bit. And the acoustic guitar is so loud, it almost buries the vocals. Overall, when I listened to this record the first time, I was sitting in my basement just focusing on the music. When I listened a second time through, I was watching a sunset. And it was many times better the second time, which made me realize that this album is not engaging enough to be heavily focused on by itself, but it fits really well in a secondary role, playing behind an experience rather than being an experience itself. If you've listened to this album... Maybe back in August, maybe you funded the Kickstarter campaign, maybe you're just listening to it recently. What'd you think of it? Uh, if you listen to anything else recently, let me know below. Uh, I'd love to interact with you guys. Send me an email. You can follow me on Twitter, at Discern Reviews. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. See ya.